up in years five and six. I'm going to use the mic because I don't have a voice like the teachers. Is that okay? Um, I'm really thrilled to be invited as a in, uh, um, author, visiting author to your school. This school is very, very special to me because both my kids attended this school over the last four years. My daughter is here, hi Gabby, Gabby from the Empire. And when I talk about inspiration, you'll see I'll, I'll touch on the kids and I'll touch on the school as well. I was, in, I was asked to speak about the inspiration behind my writing, but before I do, I'd like to tell you a little story about myself. When I was your age, when I was, when I was at your age, um, I was an avid reader. I enjoyed reading books of adventure. I used to read the novels by Enid Blyton. I don't know if you know her. And as I got older, I read the, the series of Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys. And as I moved on to higher grades, I read about a secret agent, Nick Carter. And I spent a lot of time reading the series of uh, criminal lawyer Perry Mason. So, I spent, I was a, my husband and uh, kids called me a bookworm, I was a bookworm. <laughs> but uh, as I got older and I got into the grades pre-university and at university as well, um, I had very little time for fictional reading. And I went on to, to have a working career, I went into the corporate world. And I also had a very busy life. I uh, was involved in business associations. There was a period of time I worked and studied, and I had very little time for reading. And I really missed it. Actually, much later on in my life, I made a decision to make a change in my life. Slide two. <laughs> yes, uh, much later on in my life, I decided I wanted to, to change that. I missed the world of imagination. So one thing, please don't ever underestimate the time that you have to read now. You are going to miss it when you become an adult. Even uh, my husband is also here and he will contest it the same. We are very, very, very involved with corporate work. When we go on holidays, we, we always take books to try and, and you know, and, and do some reading. So please do okay. enjoy the time that you have the, uh, the leisure of in, immersing yourself in a fantasy world. Um, yeah, so I have a short video. I'll play a short video and then we talk about the inspiration. message similar to what I said, but it's in a video, I thought it would be you know, more organized. Hello, I'm Shirina Ajan, and I'm here to tell you about my excited new fantasy novel. It is called The Code of Seven, Book One, The New World Order. The Code of Seven is seven individuals who live in different worlds, whose lives when interconnected create a tremendous force that opens a portal between worlds. I decided to write this novel seven years ago. I suppose seven was a little lucky number for me. There was a period in my life I was reflective, and I realized I'm happiest when I'm imaginative or creative. For two months, I wrote just sentences, anything that came to my mind. After those two months, I realized I was more observant. I was able to write more details about certain things. And from then on, I took two years as an evolution to write my first novel. Unknown to either of them, they're close proximity. Okay, <laughs> so now let's talk about what inspired me. Actually, uh, there's lots of things that inspire me in my writing, but on the top of the list would be my kids. So I'm happy one of them is here. Uh, both Gabriella and Nicholas are very, very creative, and I'm, I actually give a lot of credit to the school that they attend. So please, if you allow me, I'd like to give a round of applause to all the teachers and the school and its curriculum, because I give a lot of credit. Thank you. This uh, school, because I know we come from different countries, the school is remarkable in creating an environment for you to be imaginative and creative. This, the teachers are remarkable at doing that. In fact, one of my first set of readers was a teacher from here, which is Timothy, is he Tim Cooper? If you get my book and you read the acknowledgement, you'll see Tim and it's one of your teachers. And the librarian, of course, as well, was one of the first uh, readers. And uh, Tim's feedback was very fruitful. 
and the kids as well. Uh, my, my two kids have wonderful friends, I see some of them here. And uh, you, I think the spirit that I feel in the school is, you know, is, it's very conducive to get back in touch with the child in me. So I give a lot of credit to you guys, the students as well. And uh, generally, my travel as well. Um, I think uh, people on the whole is a big inspiration for my writing. We love traveling, my family and I. And um, just meeting with different uh, individuals, being in different countries, um, being a visitor to different cultures, that was also a big part of um, influencing me in my writing. And it led to me wanting to have main characters from different backgrounds. So in this book, I didn't really create one main character. I'm going to write a series of five. And in this first book, I concentrated on two characters, Eva and Nathaniel. And one came from the Andean region, influenced by my travel to Peru and the Machu Picchu. And the second is, of course, influenced by my stay here in Dubai. I've called the city Haley Blue. So the setting is I, I've uh, introduced characters based on a lot of my travel. And I give credit to my husband as well. <laughs> Uh, because uh, he's very mechanical. So for instance, when I created a Nuba board, he said I should put jet propeller engines. So he put that on his mechanical elements, he knows about cars. And... So I try to mix that so I can appeal to both girls and boys. So uh, there's a lot of inspiration that I get as well. Uh, I try to also put hidden messages in the novel because uh, my background is quite diverse. I worked in environmental consultancy I'm very, very conscious about littering, about keeping places clean, uh, about clean energy. So uh, Nathaniel, for instance, he was involved in a school project looking at cleaner technology. And his dad was involved in banking, which I always saw, uh, I was part of, I was, I was involved in investment banking before, but now I manage an education management consultancy company, uh, which is working with universities in Africa. Okay, another, um, something that, when, when you get my book and you see the first two or three pages, I talk about the inner voice, because I think that, uh, that leads you to your final destiny without you knowing it. I had to make a lot of uh, decisions for very strange changes in my life. For instance, I'm from the Caribbean, and I was an investment banker, and I got involved in a project to build universities in Africa. So a lot of my friends and my colleagues thought it was very strange that I would want to travel to Africa. It was so far away. Have, you know, uh, I had a secure job. But I followed my inner voice and it led me to a whole new adventure. So I think your inner voice is very important. Don't lose that as you get older. That's my advice to you. And in this book I created um, the entities called the Guardians and the School of Nature. And they would represent the inner voice in the novel. And now we come to the, um, bye Gabby, good luck. Gabby's in PC Athletics, so good luck to you guys. <laughs> um, bye. Um, now I'll talk a little bit about the, the books, but I heard that you have been told about some parts of the book, so you may have questions and answers for me. So I, instead of me speaking about it, can I open the floor to any questions first? Okay, I see this hand first. Did you believe in, it, in any mythical creatures when you were younger, and what's your favorite? That's a good question. Well, mythical? Uh, no. I, I read a lot of action novels, so uh, a mythical creature in my past life. I, you know what I was fascinated about? It was space. I actually wanted to be an astronaut at your age, probably. My mother tell me all types of story to dissuade me. Of course, eventually I found out I was claustrophobic, so I, I realized I couldn't, uh, I would not survive as an astronaut. But, um, it, yeah, not, not really. I was very fascinated with outer space, and in fact, the video I showed sort of alluded to that. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. 
favorite uh, uh, yeah, icon. Okay, now I would say, um, um, do you have you seen the movie Galaxy? Yeah, I think the, the Guardians of the Galaxy, yes. That's my favorite now at the moment. He's funny, but it's my favorite at the moment. I'll start him up. What was your favorite story as a child? I won't disclose my age, but I know it's a secret seven for me that likes me. You know, it's a story maybe uh, to influence my book as well. But they, they were always involved in an adventure. And of course, without their parents' knowledge. So it's quite fun for me as a kid to read stories that the parents not knowing, etc. And it was also, they were always getting involved in in evil schemes by adults, actually. So that sort of was kind of fascinating for the way they schemed it. Oh, she's like... At what, age you, at what age did you start writing the books? Very, very late. <laughs> um, I was just a reader at your age. I. Wanted, I decided to write my book much later in my life. I don't really have to tell my age, but what I can tell you, um, I decided to write five years before I started. So at a certain age, I said, when I reach this age, I'm going to write. But as, as the adults in the room will tell you, you get very caught up in life. And a lot of people here want to write, and you get busy in your life, so you don't. But when I reached that age, I was very determined to start, and that's why I started only with sentences. That, that was at the back of the room. Uh, so, I don't regret anything. Everything was a learning curve, but I did have to redraw. I had to go back and change things before I went into the publishing step. One of the most difficult exercises. Yeah, um, there was the editing, because uh, and even good writers, when, because you write and you flow with your thoughts and you don't structure, you don't check that you missed the A and you forgot the the, and yeah, the editing is very, very difficult, but I don't regret anything. The pink shirt and then I'll come to Yes, I used the publishers, the new publishers, but at first they said they could not do something for me with the quality that I wanted. I chose images that I wanted to, I wanted to benchmark to, and they couldn't. I looked for all, uh, illustrators in Dubai and in India, and eventually they came back to me. I couldn't find someone really uh, with the style, and eventually they came back to me and they said they would give it a shot, and they did, and I liked it. But I, I actually have, now I engage another illustrator. He lived in, he grew up in Dubai, but he lives in London now, where he's an artist. So I'll show you the second cover at the end. Uh, oh my God, not come. The one with the black, let me go with the guy. I haven't heard any of the boys. The boy in the back, I'll come back. Well, my mom influenced me. She didn't want me to be an astronaut. Um, also, what this track distracted me as well, I became interested in other things as well. I and my first degree is in analytical chemistry. So I became very fascinated with geology and geophysics, the, the structure of the Earth. So I moved from space back to Earth. So that's what happened to me. Let me ask her and then, and then you. The main characters in book one are Eva and Nathaniel, and then later on in the book, in the climax, they were thrown into the portal, and they were able to see the other five of the code of seven. And book two is going to make, or you know, all seven of them are going to be the main characters. Hands up, a long time ago. I'll get to it if I have enough time. Um, I think Eva. <laughs> The first character in the book, she's a lot like me, uh, who lived in a simple environment but thought, was dreaming of other worlds and traveling. That's so fast to know. Another boy. This is my first.
but I intend to write four more in one series and a lot more after. <laughs> I'm going to go very fast now. The lighting. Yes. Yes. I am. I'm working full time and I'm writing book two. I do it on weekends and sometimes I have to take half days off just to get back on track because a complete month would go and I would not write. But yes. Oh, uh, another boy. <laughs> to Nick Carter? No, Agent Carter. What got me into it? It's just a curiosity. I like, I like fast paced books actually. And it's one of the styles I would use in my books. Very fast -paced. One of the favorite, if you're going to ask me, two of my favorite authors now are Dan, Dan Brown, which is probably above your age, and Paul Aquilo, which is also above your age. But Dan Brown is a very fast paced author. Well, I mean, I need to be positive. One of the things life coach and teach you is to be positive, so I'll rate my book 8.9. <laughs> Or nine. And the favorite part of my book is when they were thrown into the portal and they saw the other flight of the group of seven. I think boy at the end and then yes, quickly. It's going to be in Magrudis pretty soon, <laughs> but I'm, I'm also going to be out in Astro Tooth today as well. <laughs> yes. Oh sorry. Um. They have not all met in this book as yet. Even Nathania saw them and they have not seen them yet. So they were thrown into the portal and they were able to see each of them in their different world. They will meet in book two though. very important, what you choose to put on your book cover. So for instance, I quite like this, but Nicholas didn't like it much. So, um, and then the book also appealed to adult readers as well. So I thought of coming up with a code, and this is the symbol I came up with. And it represents the seven, because, and what is going to happen in the other series when the seven meets, it's going to close the links. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick quote. So this as a book cover. Oh, sorry. This is the book cover. And I don't need cover, but it's going to change to that being the center of the book. So who prefers this one? Okay. Who 
Okay, good. I think I'm going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you so much.